Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Today we're going to continue taking a walk on Central America's wild side. We are traveling with Nigel Marvin、uh, in the program on Animal Planet called. Wild Central America. Now, last time we talked about some of the things he was seeing in Honduras, and his tour guide was the president of Honduras. And they took a helicopter someplace, and they were looking for a kind of snake, right? They were actually going bird watching,、uh, but the president challenged、uh, Nigel to see if he could find a new snake species.、Uh, he didn't find a novel one or a new species, but he did run into.、Uh, A snake that they all pretty much fear over there because、um, they have poison and they will bite you if they can get to you.、Uh, tercio, tercio pelo, tercio pelo. <laughs> sounds But, Italian、uh, to me. <laughs> yeah, see, I go Italian rather than Spanish. But、um, yeah, they're pretty dangerous snakes, though. They don't kill most people. Although, Tom, I was thinking if you have a toddler, you wouldn't want the toddler to be bitten by any sort of snake because their bodies are so tiny. Ah,、uh, true. They, they might be more susceptible、yes. to illness. Yeah. So yeah, don't take your kids into the Central American rainforest. To、there. the jungle? No. The jungle there. But、uh, today we're going to、uh, experience some other things in Honduras. So let's find out what these things are about. Let's read through the entire contents of today's lesson right now, and then we'll come back to explain it. At a nearby nature resort. Nigel encounters a wild cat called a margay. These creatures are natural acrobats that spend most of their lives in the trees. Margays are extremely intelligent when it comes to catching prey. They frequently mimic monkey noises to lure them closer for an attack. The margay Nigel encounters is quite friendly toward people. That's because resort workers raised her after she was abandoned as a kitten. When she grew older, the workers released the margay back into the wild, but she still comes back to visit every few days. The next morning, Nigel enjoys a traditional Honduran breakfast outdoors. He tries a baleada, a tortilla stuffed with eggs, cheese, beans, and avocado. Nigel looks up and realizes he's not dining alone. A group of hummingbirds are sipping sugar water from feeders around his table. As they hover above the feeders, their wings beat approximately 50 times per second. Reaching the water inside isn't a problem for hummingbirds, as their long tongues extend twice as far as their bills. Later, Nigel takes a ferry from mainland Honduras to the Bay Islands. He's on a mission to explore the Mesoamerican reef. At nearly 1,100 kilometers long. It's the second largest barrier reef on Earth. Nigel grabs an underwater flashlight and goes out for an evening of scuba diving. Once underwater, he shines the light on a colorful creature—a 20-centimeter-long reef squid. Every day, these skilled hunters eat half their body weight in fish and other sea creatures. Next, he spots a balloon fish. When attacked. This tiny fish can blow up its body and double its size. This is just the start of Nigel's fascinating underwater adventure. Okay, guys. In this particular episode, they're going to be at a nearby nature resort. Now, usually, when you see this word "resort," it's a vacation resort, right?、Uh, a place where、um, you not only have A hotel room and a,、uh, I guess, a couple of different restaurants. But most nice resorts have golf clubs and tennis courts there, and you don't even have to leave the resort. But this is a nature resort, so it's a place where、um, people are taking care of animals to make sure they're safe. Um, and it's much better than a zoo because a zoo there's really not enough space for these poor animals. So they're at a nature resort where these、uh, wild animals are there, but they often often are protected from、uh, poachers, people who would come to kill them and use them、uh, maybe for what you know maybe their, their fur. I don't know. These margays are really cute. If you haven't seen them, you need to look it up. They are so adorable. They kind of Look like a cat combined with a tiger kind of thing.、Uh, mm. Lots of stripes.、Um, they're pretty smart 
too, aren't they, Tom? I would imagine.、Uh, gee, it's、uh, so fascinating how many different kinds of cats there are in the、I、world:、know. lions, tigers, pumas,、uh, leopards, cheetahs. Cheetah. Yeah.、Uh, yeah, the list goes on and on. So now we've got this wild cat in Central and South America called a margay, and they are natural acrobats that spend most of their lives in the trees.、Oh. There you go. Maybe you've seen cats climb up in trees. Uh, when I was a kid, sometimes the cats would crawl up in the trees, and then they couldn't get themselves back <laughs> down. Yeah, where they dumb. So you always had to find somebody who could climb up a ladder and grab them by the scruff of the neck and bring them back down the tree. Or sometimes you'd have to call, for example, the fire station. Yeah, we we actually had a fireman go up into a tree and rescue a cat. Wow. Those cats are pretty dumb, aren't、yeah. they? They probably should be kept indoors. But well, the margay doesn't seem to have this problem. They are natural acrobats, and they spend a lot of their time, actually most of their lives, in the trees.、Hmm. Now, an acrobat is somebody who is good with their body. They can do all sorts of different tricks.、Uh, we often describe them as like maybe working in circuses. You know, they can juggle bowling pins and things like that. Uh, they are acrobats.、Uh, maybe they can、uh, spin plates on the ends of sticks and things like that. They can do all sorts of things. They're not gymnasts. A gymnast, of course, is somebody who competes in that sport, gymnastics. An acrobat is kind of similar, but in this particular case, they're describing these margays as being like acrobats. They can climb in the trees and do all sorts of、uh, interesting movements. Yeah, although you know, before you take gymnastics as a kid,、um, the first stage or level is called acrobatics, where they just do you know really easy things. You know, for the two, three, four-year-olds,、uh, where they're doing somersaults and things like that. So these margays are really smart. We're told here they're extremely intelligent.、Uh, what do they do to catch their prey? Their prey, of course, is、uh, whatever animal it is. They stalk. And then capture, kill, and eat. So, what do they do? Hmm, they're pretty smart. They actually pretend or、uh, mimic a monkey noise、uh, to get those、uh, monkeys to come closer, and then they attack them,、uh, which is pretty awful. Uh, yeah, I can't even imagine. They look like really sweet cats, so I can't see them being. Predators. Remember, that's the opposite of the prey. The, the animal that's actually tracking another animal to hunt and kill them and eat them is the predator, and the one that's hunted, killed and eaten is the prey. Yeah, cats have this instinct. No matter how sweet and kind、oh, and fluffy your home cat is, they always want to kill something.、Mm. I was、uh, so mad at、uh, our pet cat a number of years ago that、uh, killed a gecko. I thought that was so low class of that cat. Geckos are little lizards that they have in Asia. They're so cute. Did he eat it? Did、uh, your cat eat it? I don't think I let it. I tried to save the gecko, but it was too late. Oh. But、uh, cats do have that instinct, and that's what margays do. They catch their prey by kind of a mimicking monkey noises、mm. to lure them in or to attract them. So they make noises like monkeys, like dit 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 dit, or whatever noises monkeys make. So they mimic that. They copy the sounds, and then of course the、uh, the monkeys come in closer. Hey, what's that? There's another monkey here. Let's go check it out. And then the margay is waiting and pounces on those monkeys, and that's all she wrote. Now the margay Nigel encounters is quite friendly toward people.、Hmm. So this one is not very aggressive. This one is more tame. It's、uh, friendly towards people. There's a good reason for that.、Uh, this particular margay、uh, isn't completely wild. It was、uh, raised by the resort workers after、um, this margay was found as a kitten. So, you know, there's a different sort of relationship between the margay and people because of that. So, when she grew older, the workers released her. This margay back into the wild. She still lives on the resort, of course, but she comes back to visit them every few days, probably for food. I'm just gonna guess. So the next morning, Nigel enjoys a traditional Honduran breakfast outdoors. Now I have not heard of this particular dish. It sounds delicious. It's a balieda,、uh, which is a tortilla, which we have here in Taiwan. Yay!、Mm-hmm. And they put eggs and cheese, beans and avocado 
into this tortilla, wrap it up, and that's your breakfast. I guess it's your breakfast roll, your、mm. breakfast tortilla. It sounds good. Sounds very nutritious. It's got all sorts of protein in there with the beans and cheese.、Mm -hmm. And some vegetables, avocado. We like avocado. That's that、uh, kind of green, black sort of、uh, fruit. Aguacate in Spanish,、mm. uh, but uh, avocado. What's that in、uh, Chinese? I kind of it's luoli. Lu Lu there you go. There you go. That's it. I think you, yeah, I you got、those. that. You know that, and I don't. But I make、uh, guacamole. Guacamole. Yeah, okay, so that's、avocado. kind of a sauce that is used in Mexican or Central American、so、cooking. But that's what he gets for breakfast.、Mm -hmm. But Nigel looks up and realizes. He's not dining alone. He's got company there. So yes, indeed, he's outdoors having a traditional breakfast, the Honduran style. And again, it's called a baleada. And he thinks he's eating by himself, but he's not. He's not dining, or he's not eating alone. He has company. And so, who's、uh, eating together with him? Oh, I love these hummingbirds. They're tiny, tiny little birds, and they flap their wings so fast. I love them.、Uh, we had a lot of hummingbirds in the backyard when I was growing up because we had a plant that was very sweet. So, if you have anything that's sweet, you're sure to see a hummingbird come along. So, this group of hummingbirds are sipping sugar water from feeders around his table. Sounds like the people there have provided. Provided something sweet for the hummingbirds, so they just take some water and add some sugar to it, and there you go. The hummingbirds can.、Uh I guess they smell the sugar or the sweetness, and they come over to feed from、uh, that feeder. Feeder usually is something that is just you could buy it. It's either plastic or made of wood, and we have feeders for birds quite often that you'll find out、uh, in people's trees in their yards. We had a couple feeders ourselves when I was growing up. I had a bird feeder myself here in Taiwan, but、oh, yeah? it kept attracting just sparrows. Oh, and they make a mess.、Uh -huh. uh, there was the、uh, bird. All over the floor, so I finally gave up on that. Darn! <laughs> but、uh, maybe some other people will have luck with bird feeders. But、uh, we'll talk some more about hummingbirds and other things in Honduras in just a second. But let's take a break and listen now to our Chinese teacher. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. 今天我们要继续来看这个单元，谈到 Central America， 中美洲。哎，它有什么样的神奇不同的？野生动物，好，我们在这边其实是在介绍一个动物星球频道上的电视节目。那这个节目呢，嗯，有一位 Nigel， 他就带着大家到中美洲这个地方来，来看这边有什么样不同的，嗯，令人惊奇的野生动物。好，我们之前提到了蛇，接下来呢，他带我们去看有一种是猫科的动物，哎。也就是它是一个 wild cat， 它叫 Margay。这种我们说到，其实就算是老虎，它也是一种猫科的动物。所以这个 Margay 美洲小豹猫，它也是属于 a wild cat。好，那我们来看，它说到这个动物的一些特性，它很聪明哦，它会模仿猴子在提，然后让猎物来靠近之后再攻击它。好，那在这边我们说到他很聪明，哎，有一个句型就是 when it comes to catch and prey， 他的聪明就是如果提到捕捉猎物这个方面，那他真是聪明。When it comes to， 要记得这个 to 是介系词的 to， 所以后面的 catch and 你看到的是 v i n g， 也就是说加了一个。动名词，好，再来，呃，我们继续往下，下面呢这一段就再告诉大家，还有没有什么别的很令人惊奇的野生动物？下一段就提到是第二天早上。好，我们看到这个开头 ，the next morning。嗯，我们在英文里面呢，当然，如果你谈 next， 哎。Next morning 跟 the next morning 是不太一样的。你有一个 the， 那意思呢？其实它的时间点就不是绝对的时间，也就是说，不是我们现在在讲的第二天，而是在某一个时间点上的第二天，也可能是过去，哎，也可能是未来，但就不是你绝对的现在。换句话说，当你看到这里的
the next morning. 当然，这个隔天早上就是指他做节目的时候。嗯，在那个那个时间点的第二天。好，所以有加的定冠词跟没有加的是不一样的。好，我们再来往下看，下面就提到说他早餐吃的东西。不过他很快就发现不是他一个人在吃，还有谁呢？原来就是接下来要介绍的一个野生动物 ，hummingbirds， 也就是蜂鸟。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, let's continue with our lesson where we left off. Uh, the host of our TV program, Wild Central America, Marvin, excuse me, Nigel Marvin,、mm -hmm. is having breakfast outdoors. He's having a traditional Honduran baleada, but then he notices he's not dining alone. He has company. There is a group of hummingbirds sipping sugar water from feeders around his table. Now, as they hover above the feeders, their wings beat approximately fifty times per second. Wow, that's pretty fast. Very fast.、Uh, the little devils are moving those wings so fast that they really need to have high energy food. <laughs> That's why they、yeah. love sipping sugar water from those feeders. So,、uh, you know, if we、uh, describe the way a helicopter flies, we say it hovers, which means it kind of just stays in one position ab above the ground. You could also use that word to describe、uh, drones that、uh, people are enjoying nowadays. They hover above the ground, and yes, here we're talking about hummingbirds. Humming above the ground, or excuse me, hovering above the feeders. But、uh, normal birds don't. They don't fly that way. Normal、mm -hmm. birds just fly straight through the air. So we would not describe regular birds as hovering. We would just say they fly. Yeah, it's like they're suspended in the air,、uh, and then you see their wings. They go so fast you can barely see their wings.、Mm -hmm. That's how fast they beat them. I also wanted to say we use hover. Sometimes somebody will come up behind you, and maybe you're、um, riding. Something so you're you're facing a table or your desk, and that person's like looking over your shoulder. They're hovering over you. Now, if it's your teacher, that's fine. But if it's a friend and they're bugging you, you could say, "Quit hovering. Get get, get away." But、uh, those hummingbirds do. They just kind of suspend themselves in the air.、Mm -hmm. So they go. They are flapping their wings very quickly. Approximately is about that number. It's not exact. So reaching the water inside isn't a problem because they have really long tongues. Now this I didn't know because I've never seen it. Although I've watched them, I've never seen their tongues.、Uh, if something extends, it pushes out or moves out from a place. Picture your arms. You can have them close to your your chest. If you extend your arm, it goes away from your body. So their tongue. Extend or reach out as far as their bills. That's amazing. Yeah, we should、uh, explain what a bill is.、Mm. Uh, that is the hard part of a bird's face. I think in the Chinese you just say it's the bird's nose, but、uh, to us a nose is soft and it's a sense organ for smell. If you're talking about that hard part. On a bird, then that is their bill.、Uh, also, baseball caps—the part that goes over your eyes—that's called the bill、mm -hmm. as well.、Mm -hmm. So yes, their tongues really stick out kind of far. They already have pretty long bills, but their tongues are even longer. They extend or they go farther out than their bills. You might want to extend your visa, for example, if you're having a good time on your trip to Central America. If it's only for two weeks and you want to stay longer, hey, maybe you can extend. Your visa. Now later, Nigel takes a ferry from mainland Honduras to the Bay Islands. Ferry is a boat that usually carries not only people but motorcycles and cars as well.、Uh, there is a ferry down in Gaoshong, I believe, the one that goes out to Chijing Island. Oh, really? I rode that ferry many years ago. I assume they still have it, but my goodness, I have not ridden on that ferry for twenty years. But again, a ferry、uh, moves people across water and probably their vehicles as well. So I guess off the coast of Honduras are the Bay Islands. So he's going out there to check out what is called the Mesoamerican Reef. Now the reef is 
1,100 kilometers long. It's also the second largest barrier reef on Earth. I didn't know that. Wow, it sounds like a good place to go and visit. So Nigel grabs an underwater flashlight and goes out for an evening of scuba diving. I'm sure a lot of our listeners know what a barrier reef is. It's underneath the water, and it's usually、um, it's usually just parts of dead sea animals. They're they're、uh, they're vertebrae, they're shells that are left over, and sometimes it can really turn into a colorful place、uh, with different fish and、uh, living things that are growing off that barrier reef. Um, where's the largest one? Isn't it down there in Australia?、Uh, yeah, the Barrier Reef、uh, off the coast of、yeah. Australia. There, I guess that's the longest one in the world. So this is the second largest、cool. Barrier Reef on Earth, and yeah, it's made of coral and things like that. So I guess he's a、uh, um, he's uh, an experienced scuba diver.、Mm. So Nigel grabs an underwater flashlight and goes out for an evening of scuba diving. Scuba diving, of course, is when you swim underwater. With special equipment, okay. If you're just using a mask and a breathing tube, that's snorkeling. But scuba diving requires an air tank and training and certification and all that fun stuff. Now, once underwater, when he's underwater, he shines the light on a colorful creature. Okay, this is an underwater creature, a living thing. And it's a 20 centimeter long reef squid. Squid are usually larger than that, so、yeah. this is kind of interesting. It's only 20 centimeters long, but、uh, be careful here because these three words here, 20 centimeter long, are hyphenated,、mm -hmm. and they are describing the reef squid. It's a 20 centimeter long squid, or it's a squid that is 20 centimeters long. Um, this is a common error here I see in a lot of the writing. For example, if you work for business, you might have a two-day conference. I often have clients that would write two days conference.、Mm. No, two dash day singular guys because it's turning into an adjective. Two day and then no more hyphen. You just need one hyphen. That little line. Two day and then. Conference or you know meeting or whatever, but please、uh, be careful with those. It's pretty important. Yeah, like a two-hour drive to Taichung, or it's a ten-minute walk to my office. It's not a ten minutes walk. It's、right. a ten-minute walk with that hyphen between ten and minute. Yep, it's a ten-minute walk, or it takes me ten minutes to walk there. Right now, every day these skilled hunters eat half their body weight in fish. And other sea creatures. So this again is describing this species of squid. It's a reef squid. It's very colorful, but it's only 20 centimeters long, and it's a hunter. It's a skilled hunter. It goes after other creatures to eat them, and it actually eats a lot. It eats half its body weight in fish and other sea creatures. Do we eat that much food、no. in a day? Half our body weight? No. If I were to weigh 100 kilograms, do I eat 50 <laughs> kilograms of food? Every day, that's a lot. That's amazing! Wow, I would love that actually. So next, he spots a balloon fish, which sounds really beautiful.、Um, when attacked, this balloon fish, which is tiny, can blow up its body and double its size. These are pretty famous fish. I, I think because they're so unique and exotic,、um, a lot of people know about them because I've. Gosh, I've seen them in so many books that I've read as as a kid and an adult. They're amazing. But if you could see it live, and I'm sure they show this、uh, balloon fish actually expanding、um, on this show, it's just amazing what they can do. Or you can just go onto YouTube and、uh, type in the word balloon fish, and、uh, somebody surely will have posted a video there of a balloon fish blowing up. Blowing up. Uh, indeed. So when attacked, this tiny fish can blow up its body and double its size. So that's what you do to a balloon if you're preparing、mm -hmm. for your child's birthday party. You need to blow up those balloons. Or if you're a terrorist and you want to attack somebody, you might blow up a bus 
there's something like that.、Uh, that's just an example. Of course, you should not do that. You don't encourage do that, people to do that. No. No, you wouldn't want to do that. But I'm just、uh, using that as a as an explanation for the term blow up. But yeah, here you're blowing up the balloon, or the balloon fish blows itself up when it is attacked. This is just the start of Nigel's fascinating underwater adventure. So he's got more adventures to look forward to. These are just a couple of things that he got to experience. If something's fascinating, of course, is something that's really, truly. A、riveting, very exciting to pay attention to. It's hard to get your attention、uh, away from that because you're just so engrossed or fascinated by what you're looking at. So, this sounds like a really fun、uh, show for kids and adults alike. You could watch it with your families, you know, and talk about these different animals in English、mm. and fish, of course, as well. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Here comes our Chinese teacher. 所以呢，他现在要告诉大家的，要介绍的这种动物就是蜂鸟。那 hummingbirds 我们也知道，它有什么特殊性？第一个，它飞的时候，它的翅膀震动的非常快。好，那它下面就说。大约接近五十次，一秒五十次。还有，他有提到了一点说，说他们呢、啊，这个喙，这个嘴的部分的地方，那长长的舌头可以一直延展。他们这个长度，好，这个地方就要注意到倍数的说法。英文里面提到倍数要怎么讲？哎，因为它跟中文的习惯是不太一样的，所以要特别留意它的句构。当你说倍数的话，第一个要注意到的，也就是。你讲的是哪一个句型？好，那当然倍数一定有一个几倍几倍。比如说像这里 twice 就是它的倍数。那你用到 twice， 它后面的句构里面，当然像这里 as as 就是常常接在 twice 的后面的。那有时候你也会用 the 再加名词，比如像这边是 twice as far as， 你呢可以把它改成。Twice the length. 那这样子的话，就是用另外一个句型。好，我们来看倍数。再来呢，下面一段一样会提到倍数的地方。嗯，那我们先稍等，看一下这段接下来提什么。因为刚刚谈的是蜂鸟，那我们再来呢？好 ，Nigel 他又带着大家到了海湾群岛来。这里有珊瑚礁，然后呢，说到这个地方，它的珊瑚礁可是地球上的第二大的堡礁。那他要带大家去看，哎，这个水底的生物，这个叫做礁鱿鱼。好 ，reef squid 提到了有这个鱼类啊，嗯，他说，哎，他们。在猎食的时候，它可以吃掉它的食物，是跟它的体重达它体重一半的鱼。哦，看到这里就是我们说的倍数说法。当然，这一边是一半，所以你的倍数变成 half。那不管 twice 也好，或者 half 也好也好，他们基本上，当你讲倍数的时候，嗯，它后面的哎句构是有限制的。像这边就跟刚刚一样，哎。我们说到，你不一定用 as as， 你可以用名词。这边讲体重的一半 ，half their body weight。所以想想看 ，half the weight， half the length， half the size， 或者是 twice the size。这基本上告诉大家，倍数这两个字 ，twice 跟 half 句型上，它的用法是如何的，要特别注意。那最后呢，还有一个就是。河豚 ，balloon fish。那提到河豚，他说 ，when attacked， 哦，受到攻击的时候。当我们知道这个 when attacked， 其实就是一个分词构句的用法。你保留连接词的 when， 但是很明显主词不见了。这个主词就是后面提到的 this tiny fish。When this tiny fish is attacked， 好，省略的，重复的地方变成分词构句。好，我们的讲解就到这边结束。谢谢您。That's all for today, but don't、uh, listen to us when we say this program is fascinating. Check it out yourselves on Animal Planet. You're sure to learn lots of things that you didn't know before. From all、mm. of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.